Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs Daily War Room Update. Um, we're on day 46 of the Israel's war with the Gaza Strip and the terrorists there. Um, we are uh, um, trying to still overcome the terrorists in all of their different forms and fashions. We're talking about Hamas, we're talking about uh, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, we're talking about uh, um, Fatah in its different forms, and we're talking about Palestinian uh, uh, the Popular Front for Liberation of Palestine, and a whole host of other um, terrorist organizations that the IDF and Israel and its security forces are fighting against. Um, we're talking about the outcome of the October 7th massacre. 1,200 people at least murdered, um, raped, butchered, pillaged, um, defiled, um, babies decapitated, women uh, uh, um, violated, and uh, um, Israel start of the war. What we've seen so far is Israel... Um, starting this war with a heavy aerial bombardment and then following up with ground forces who are still operating um, today. Um, we're seeing the forces uncovering really uh, uh, terrible pictures going on in the Gaza Strip, pictures of missiles being um, held and stored in mosques, in schools, in, uh, um, in, 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 in areas where they shouldn't be held underneath the beds of children. Um, Today, we saw pictures coming out from the IDF of mortar shells being held and stored in kindergartens in the Gaza, in the Gaza Strip. Um, almost every single possible site in the Gaza Strip has been violated. Yes, violated by the terrorists in order to hide and conceal um, their terror infrastructure and in order then for them to fight on the one hand against Israel, as they say, um, but all the time enjoying that uh, cover of Israel attacking back and ostensibly destroying civilian sites. But these aren't civilian sites, uh, um, really. They are uh, um, military uh, uh, targets, um, really 100% military targets. And uh, um, they are just lucky that Israel doesn't use its full force in order um, to, to deal with and eliminate um, those sites. I'm joined today um, with my uh, um, with my co-host and, and colleague, um, Lenny Ben David, as many of you will have already um, read his materials, Lenny writes a lot of stuff on understanding what is going on uh, um, on the other side. Um, hopefully, his latest article will be coming out and um, describing how this whole industry of lies and distortions regarding the number of uh, uh, of, of casualties. And we're also joined today by our special guest, um, Ben Yamini, a journalist, a researcher, a lecturer. He's a lawyer as well, and I have to give him the credit for that, although he doesn't like uh, uh, um, necessarily to be presented that because he doesn't uh, work anymore in uh, in law, but also uh, um, specifically for our intents and purposes, um, the author of a uh, 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 of, of a recent article on the, the, the West's really fight with, uh, um, with Islamic uh, 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 fundamentalism and can we uh, uh, win that war and, uh, um, and his book, on uh, uh, the author and is the author of um, the industry of lies. How these, how how terrorists use and abuse the truth um, or or lies in order to uh, persuade uh, the the Western world um, to join their uh, uh, really genocidal homicidal narrative when it has nothing to do really uh, uh, with the truth. Um, so in Gaza, what we're seeing is the continuation of the fighting. And um, more and more materials being exposed by the IDF of the way the terrorists used and abused, specifically the Shifa hospital um, in the Gaza Strip, in, in order to conceal their terrorist uh, infrastructure. Um, in the north, we're still seeing this continuation of the war of attrition with Hezbollah, another one of uh, Iran's proxies, um, constantly challenging us on, on our northern border, on our northern front, um, attacking destroying. We, Israel responds, they attack again. Um, constantly keeping that whole conflict on a relatively low fire um, until they decide that it's time to uh, uh, turn up the heat. Um, we're seeing uh, yesterday also the continuation of the rocket fire from Gaza with a, a, a substantial barrage being fired into Tel Aviv um, and into the, the whole area of Israel's major uh, um, population centers. From further off, we're seeing um, nothing substantial coming from the Houthis in the last few days. As we saw yesterday, um, they were publishing their uh, um, films of how they attacked and uh, really commandeered 
piracy, there is no other word for it, um, a ship in uh, uh, coming up to the, the Red Sea and through the Straits of Tehran um, that they uh, uh, allege is under Israeli or Jewish ownership and therefore for them has become a legitimate uh, target. Um, we're seeing in Judea and Samaria the continuation of the anti-terror um, operations. Um, Hamas is not only present in the Gaza Strip, not only trying to present and promote its genocidal uh, um, charter there, but also in Judea and Samaria. In Judea and Samaria, they're constantly working on the ground with their partners um, and sometimes even with the assistance of, um, or at least the tacit uh, uh, um, uh, uh, agreement of the Palestinian Authority to continue carrying out terror attacks. Um, in Israel, we're seeing, again, relative quiet, um, the fears that we had of, of, of possible Israeli um, Arabs uh, uh, taking a different course has been very much uh, uh, negated. And we're seeing um, many Arabs, uh, of the Israeli Arabs, expressing a, a, a support for Israel's uh, war on terrorism. Um, what is really uh, um, lighting up the press at the moment and lighting up Israel's uh, um, uh, civil discussion is uh, um, really exactly as we were starting uh, this broadcast, different reports as to what's happening um, with hostages, um, as well as murdering 1,200 people. The Gazan terrorists um, took uh, 240 hostages into Gaza, men, women, children, babies, um, Kfir Bibas, nine months old, all the way through to 80 plus uh, uh, um, octogenarians. Um, everyone was a target and everyone was taken captive. Now there seems to be some discussion of a deal possibly brokered by Qatar um, in order to bring about the release of some of the hostages. We don't have very many details at the moment, but it appears to be a, a, a deal um, of, of the style that Israel has known. And uh, unfortunately, I've had the, the, the great misfortune of being um, heavily involved in um, where Israel releases terrorists and the terrorists release our hostages. Um, just to point out on, on, on that scale, as this uh, uh, discussion is carrying on, um, Yichir Senwar, the head of Hamas in uh, Gaza, the person who is probably most responsible for uh, the, the October 7 massacre, um, was previously convicted for his participation in terrorism, sentenced to life sentences, but was then released in 2011 as part of the deal to free um, kidnapped Israeli soldier uh, Gilad Shalit. Um, Dozens of others of the terrorists who were released in the Shalit deal um, have returned to terrorism um, already before the, the, the 7th of October. We were talking about over a dozen people who had been murdered by those terrorists who were released. Um, and now we're seeing even more of them involved uh, in the fighting. So uh, without uh, uh, further ado, um, Lenny, I, I, if with your permission, we'll go on to Bendrol. Bendrol, give us an idea of Firstly, I'd, if you could just give us a, a brief a, a introduction to the article that you just wrote um, on the world's uh, uh, fight with, with, with terror um, and, and really the, the inversion of colonialism, as, as really as you describe it there. Um, I think that's something which our audience would, uh, would be interested to hear in and, and really carrying on to this whole how the, how the West has been conquered by this industry of lies and, and sucked into this poisonous narrative where the victim becomes the aggressor and the aggressor becomes uh, 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 the victim uh, that needs to be uh, uh, protected. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ben Tom uh, I'm a journalist and researcher. Um, now, uh, to your question, uh, there are so many myths about the conflict. And, and uh, you just mentioned my book. Uh, I have to make a, a small correction. My book is not about the terror and how the terror is manipulated, people who support terror uh, manipulate the public opinion. My book uh, is dealing mainly with the two main bodies of information, namely media and academia, and how they actually manipulate everything, and, and they are lying. Uh, so many lies concerning the Middle East conflict, concerning the Israeli-Arab conflict. I'm not speaking op about opinions. I'm speaking about facts. And, and people are so much manipulated. I, I can go back in history, and, and, and we hear it now, well, uh, the people who protest against Israel, because Israel is a, a, colonial, a colonial state. Um, 
I don't know if you hear in the background, but uh, there are uh, alarms in some parts of uh, uh, Israel right now in the north. Anyway, um, anyway, uh, if, for example, if we speak about uh, um, Israel as a colonial uh, entity, uh, let me tell you something. I mean, I, I mean, I hear it, and and I'm, I'm, I I have no words to those scholars, to those intellectuals, uh, to those professors who uh, keep on saying that Israel is a colonial state. My family, my grandfather, my grandmother, they arrived from uh, Yemen more than a hundred years ago. Now, they were refugees. They escaped persecution in Yemen. I mean, what? Are they colonialists? What are you talking about? And the people who uh, uh, fled from Russia, because of the riots against the Jews, because of the persecution, because of the pogroms. They are colonialists. What are you talking about? The whole idea of Zionism uh, was a Jewish homeland. That's all. Now, you might ask, uh, why why uh, was Zionism actually initiated at the end of the 19th century? Um, because Jews were persecuted during... Uh, uh, hundreds of years. I mean, it was not something new. It happened in the East, it happened in the West, it happened in so many places. Almost wherever were Jews, Jews were persecuted. So how come that they uh, began with this kind of Zionism uh, uh, at the end of the 19th century? It's very simple, because in that time, many other peoples began actually to revolt against colonialism they were striving, they were fighting for one thing, which is self-determination. That's why, I mean, Zionism was part of many other movements who were looking for self-determination. And people did not understand the whole idea of the Balfour Declaration, like if it was a kind of a colonialist kind of a gift that was given uh, to the Jews. Not at all, the opposite. Because the international community accepted the idea of self-determination, it was given also to Jews. That's what happened, because Palestine in that time was uh, uh, underpopulated. And uh, and uh, the only one place the Jews the, the wanted the, uh, uh, to build the uh, homeland, to renew the homeland, was actually uh, uh, Eretz Israel, the land of Israel, that was called Palestine, but not by Jews and not by Muslims. If you will go to the Muslim maps, you will not find the Palestine because there was not any entity by the name of Palestine. And until 1948, the Palestinians actually, and it is confusing a bit, I know, Palestinians were actually only the Jews. My parents who grew up under the British mandate, they were Palestinians. Every Jewish institution until 1948 was Palestine something. Palestine Post is the Jerusalem Post of the day. Palestine Bank is the Jewish Zionist Bank, which is Bank Lumi of today, the National Bank of Israel, and so on and so on. But it is confusing. The whole idea of, of a, a Palestinian identity came much later, mainly in the 60s. Now, I'm saying it because so many, we see that so many demonstrations against Israel I mean, and people do not understand the basics of the conflict. They do not understand. If we go on, let me, um, I'm not going to give you all the history of Zionism. If we get uh, uh, to nowadays, yes, we have a conflict right now with Hamas. Hamas is one chapter of the Muslim brothers. Muslim uh, uh, brothers were uh, actually uh, founded in uh, 1928. And, uh, and they immediately became anti-Semites. And uh, one of the, the principles that was written by Hassan Elbana, uh, who is the founder of uh, the Muslim Brothers, uh, he wrote an article in 1938, following the revolt of the Arabs in Palestine, he wrote an article uh, with the title, Industry of Death, which means we are, we are the industry of death. Not of prosperity, not of education, not of progress, but of death. Now, when you hear the leaders of Hamas today, you hear the same kind of voices. They are speaking about what? About one thing. We are 
industry of death. They say, I don't have here the presentation to show you uh, uh, because I, I mean, we have all the videos and, and they say repeated, we are the uh, industry of death and we are coming to exterminate, to exterminate all the Christians and all the Jews, not only the Jews, not only the Jews, it's a big mistake. When people think that Hamas is dealing only with Jews, no. They are part of the global jihad. Sometimes, by the way, they are even worse than ISIS. We just have to listen to what said the head of the Islamic University in Gaza, to what uh, uh, other leaders of the Hamas said. We are speaking about extermination, and we are uh, going to control the whole, as, uh, as uh, Mahmoud al-Azhar, one of the leaders of the Hamas, just said, said months, some months ago, he declared, he declared, we are going to control all the 512 million square kilometers of the world. And we are get, going to uh, uh, throw away uh, uh, Christianity and, of course, uh, uh, Zionism. But we did not listen. Part of the problem is, and now I'm speaking about uh, uh, media and academia in the West, they do not listen. They just did not want to hear what is the real nature nature of the, the Hamas. Because now we are saying, okay, Hamas is ISIS. Excuse me, it's not uh, something new. It's not because of what they did in October 7. It's because of the so many, so many declarations of the head of the Hamas. That's exactly what we are going to do. And uh, uh, Yehya Sanwar, Sanwar that we are speaking about now, he had a speech uh, saying, I'm going to uh, uh, rip their heart, hearts from their bodies. And people did not believe it. And uh, it was known in 2018. It's very interesting because a, a UN committee that was exposed to what he said said, no, he did not mean it. He wanted to instill fear in, uh, uh, in the uh, hearts of the people. That's all. Excuse me. We saw what happened in... October 7. That's exactly what uh, he wanted to do and what uh, he did. Now, uh, uh, I know that my time is limited. Uh, uh, I will say just, just one thing. I mean, many times uh, uh, when you see there's so many people uh, demonstrating, and I'm speaking mainly about young people uh, in so many uh, universities in the world, from Berkeley to Harvard to uh, Princeton and uh, all these places, when they are uh, marching and they uh, think that the Hamas is a kind of uh, resistance movement against the occupation. There is not any occupation in Gaza Strip, but this is not the point. The point is, you know, uh, this kind of progressive walk kind of people, they speak about uh, we are for the uh, 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 oppressed and we are against the oppressor. Wow. It sounds nice, but there is nothing to do with this conflict. Why? Because jihad and the Hamas, which is part of the Hamas, the jihad is killing mainly Muslims. When you see, I mean, let's zoom out. Uh, exactly 89% uh, of the terror attacks in the world are against Muslims. 94, 95% of the victims, fatalities of the global jihad are Muslims. So who are you demonstrating for? And what this kind of, of uh, uh, nonsense about uh, oppressor and uh, oppressed, about strong and weak, jihad is the problem, jihad is the new imperialism. They want to control the world and, and of course, to impose this uh, Sharia law or whatever. So when you are uh, uh, marching in favor of the Hamas, you are actually uh, marching in favor of the darkest kind of imperialism. The darkest kind of imperialism. So. And what is the problem? The problem is that they don't know. They just know nothing, the students. There's, may, I don't even know if the uh, uh, faculty, if the uh, professors that teach them 
no or not? I guess they know that they manipulate the students because they are against colonialism. But the jihad is the uh, uh, biggest uh, colonial uh, power now. I think that's one totally. of the, the yeah. main points, if I may interject, uh, Ben yeah. uh, Here we really are talking about a situation where sometimes you can assume that, the, 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 that, that some of the university students um, really have no clue about what they're talking about, yeah. even though in the... In, in, in the in the age of the internet, the access and the uh, and the, uh, the the ability to get to uh, um, real information is is obviously much more enhanced. Um, previously, you had to lie on reports; you had to go and find it. You you could read newspapers. Now everything everything's there at the at your fingertips. The the professors and the lecturers, right, Lenny? That what what's their excuse? How do you explain? Uh, um, their, their approach, uh, Bendro, they clearly know that what they're saying is distorted, um, not true, describing Israel as colonialist, describing Israel as an apartheid state. What do you think is driving that? It's, um, it's a very interesting question because I participated in many panels in, in leading universities from Harvard to uh, Columbia. Uh, and uh, in the panels many times uh, when I was allowed to speak, but it's not uh, right now. It's, uh, I'm not sure that uh, any, some, any Israeli can even speak in this kind of panels. They will not even show up. But when, when we had this kind of discussions, uh, they repeated the same kind of lies. They just repeated the same kind of lies. And we have a problem. I'll tell you why we have a problem. Of course, I'm denying, I'm refuting, I'm showing the real facts. Uh, many times we have to remember, I mean, Israel is a democracy, which is good, which, uh, uh, of course, all of us uh, want Israel to be a democracy. But, but many, many ideas about Israel as a colonial state, Israel as an apartheid state, which are totally lies, and, and, and we are not going to details right now, but they are coming from Israeli professors. So when they say that they are telling me, oh, come on, come on, what do you want? This is what uh, the Israeli professor is saying. Yes, they are part of this kind of, of, of phenomena, of school of thought, because their articles, uh, uh, whoever is in the academia knows it, their articles will never be published if they will not be anti zionist and this is part of the problem. So, so slowly by slowly, they know. They know. We have to be. We have to adapt ourselves to the global school of thought. And the, I mean, you know, when I was a, a, a law student uh, in uh, uh, years ago, uh, uh, and and uh, we learned about uh, the justifications for the freedom of speech. One of the justifications, the most important one, was that in the marketplace of ideas, truth is going to prevail. Let me tell you something. It's something like uh, uh, 40 uh, years since when I studied law. Truth is not prevailing. Lies prevail. And of course now, with the social media, and yes, lies prevail. Truth is not winning. Unfortunately, truth is defeated. But they don't even feel those professors that you are speaking about, they don't even feel that they have to answer because they do not care anymore about facts. And George, they do not. Your comment about a marketplace is very realistic. However, that marketplace is today a shuk. And in the shuk, they lie. And as a result, we see um, the Muslim Brotherhood having impact even in the campuses. I want to thank you very much for tying the um, the Hamas to the jihad movement. Um, who is the banker for the jihad movement and for the Muslim Brotherhood and for Hamas? We know it's Qatar. And Qatar's yeah, yeah. queen mother, Sheikh Hamusa, already 10 or 12 years ago was paying money to work on the American campuses and to start the BDS program. Um, tie it to, um, to Hassan Obama, the founder of Muslim Brotherhood. Recently, his grandson, a professor in a Western university, and you know, you probably even know him. Um, uh, of, course they do. of course they do, yeah. Ramadan. Yeah. You're speaking Tariq Ramadan. 
Tarek Ramadan yeah. um, shows up in in Qatar, and as a result, we're seeing Muslim Brotherhood and their agenda also spreading around. There's not much difference, as you pointed out, between Al Qaeda and the Muslim Brotherhood and the goals of Hamas. And your comment about Hamas bringing Christianity into it forced me to go back and look up a magazine called Tabik, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Tabik is the magazine of the Islamic, the Islamic State. And this was one of their magazine covers. Tabik, that is the that's the flag of the Muslim of the, the Islamic of ISIS Islamic in St. Peter's Square in the Vatican. Christianity is also on their site. And as the old Arab saying goes, first the Saturday people and then the Sunday people. So just thank one, you. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, just to tell you that uh, leaders of the Hamas, they are saying just the same, that we have to raise the flag of uh, uh, Islam uh, over above the Vatican. They say just the same. People are not aware. And the students do not know. And the professors, I have no idea if they know or not. Or not. Even if they do know, they do not tell it to their students. My question to you, what is the significance of this poll that just came out among Palestinians in the West Bank, Judea, Samaria, and in Gaza that shows no faith in the Americans, in the Europeans, in the United Nations? They have no trust and they have no, no positive attitude. Does this mean that they're moving against the West? Uh, first of all, they are against the, the, the West. I mean, that's not uh, something new. It's 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 interesting because actually uh, uh, there are many research about uh, what what is uh, what uh, can make the change, and uh, it is interesting because I mean a state like uh, uh, United Arab Emirates they change. You don't feel that that kind of uh, of uh, hatred against Israel and or against Jews, and the main factor was education. Education. I mean, in the last twenty years, the education, the textbooks in uh, UAI changed slowly by slowly, but it totally changed. Much more tolerance and so on. It did not change in the Palestinian authorities. It uh, last five years, there is a change, for example, in Saudi Arabia. Uh, there is a change in Morocco, but there is not any change in the Palestinian Authority. There is not any change in Jordan, even if we have peace with Jordan. So education is part of the story. Not always, by the way, when we are saying, when we are making a kind of rule, it's, uh, there are many, uh, always exceptions. For example, Iran. In Iran, they educate, of course, uh, against Jews, but but the people do not buy it. We we don't have the time to discuss why, how come that in Iran uh, students are totally against the regime and why they are uh, refusing to burn the flags of uh, the U uh, of the United States and Israel, and how come that they do it in Berkeley? Ha! Huh. So I prefer to uh, be in Tehran University and not in Berkeley. <laughs> it's very strange. I know. I know. It's part of the tragedy. It's part of the tragedy. Anyway, going back to your uh, question, yes. Uh, first thing is education. And and if we want a change, and I uh, uh, think that we need a change, Europe, which is the main funder of uh, the Palestinian education, enough, enough. Enough. You cannot continue educating people. I mean, you can, uh, by the way, you can argue against Israel, against this policy or another policy. Fair enough. Not everything that is said about Israel is anti Semitism. And I, uh, as a journalist, uh, uh, two, three times a week, I criticize my own government. This is not the point. The point is not being a right winger, a left winger, against settlements, in favor of settlements. This is not the point. The point is you must change. You must change, and we have to say to, to say to Europe. I hope, I hope that the Israeli government, whoever will be the prime minister in uh, half a year or after the, this uh, conflict, will tell the Europeans not anymore because this is your education and UNRWA, UNRWA, 
that is totally funded by the international community. The education is actually a kind of, of a, a, a brainwashing against the very existence of Israel. So, and, so there, Ben Dora, I, I unfortunately have to correct you. In the Palestinian Authority, whilst we have seen some movement um, of education systems in some of the Arab countries moving in a positive di direction, specifically in the Palestinian Authority, the education system, even with all of the European funding, has just been getting worse and worse and worse over the years. Um, the latest versions of their of their uh, of their school curriculum are are, are, are hideous. When, yeah, yeah, but that's exactly what I said. That they, it did they not describe, change. In, yeah. yeah, when they describe Palestinians throwing Molotov cocktails at buses and and then the result of the the, the Israeli bus going up in flames as we're celebrating while we watch a barbecue. This is I, no one could ever possibly believe that that appears in a school book, but it does. Um, that is funded. That is funded by the EU. That is funded by the EU. The EU funds the teachers, and yeah. and it's incredible to see that that same that that same curriculum is then adopted and used by UNRWA itself. UNRWA adds its own hatred of uh, um, of of already eternalizing this idea of. Palestinian refugee yeah. uh, hood and, and and victimhood and and one day all of these refugees will democratically and demographically um, destroy Israel um, and 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 so you're right and you see all of these things playing in but but what what I'm trying to understand and, and also it came out specifically I, I, in your article uh, that, that you said it quite clearly after 9/11 the world decided to get together and say this cannot happen anymore the world is going to be a different place but really as you described nothing if anything has changed it's only changed for the worst how do you understand or explain this idea of of, of, of almost of constant suicide of 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 western society not fight even though we're we're, we're fighting sporadically against uh, uh, individual uh, uh, efforts or, or, or to spread this fanatical islam but really on the whole we're losing the battle we we we're not even on the battlefront for them because they've now brought that battle into our universities, into the schools, into the societies where you have people going out onto the street and and, and in, in America, in New York, and, the, and they're supporting Hamas. They're supporting the massacre of innocence, of, of, of rape, pillaging, beheading babies. Where are we yeah. losing that war and what do you yeah. think can be done about it? Yeah. Okay. It's uh, first of all, uh, uh, I think uh, you already gave part of the answer. Uh, we will get to it. But um, it's very interesting because immediately after the 9/11, immediately after, there was uh, a question that were raised, and many articles were uh, written with the same kind of article. Why do they hate us? I guess uh, you are familiar with this kind of uh, 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 many uh, gen generic articles. Again, one after another. And the main answer was, surprise, surprise. Not all, but, but mainly the answer was, okay, they hate us because of us. Because we support Israel, because we are colonialists, because we are imperialists. I mean, they did not put the blame on the jihad on Al-Qaeda. They say, you know what? You know what? Ah, we were wrong. We were wrong. We were against them. So they, now they, are, uh, uh, they came to revenge. Now it went, it became worse and worse during the years. And you said already, in the last 20 years, Qatar invested something like, uh, there is a debate of how much, because we don't know about all the money that uh, they, they, uh, 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 they concealed it partly, but what we know is about something like four billion dollars. That's what we know. There is a huge amount that the university did not even report. There is a, an investigation going on about this kind of uh, of manipulation. But yes, of course, money spoke, and it was a school of thought. I mean, we are liberals from liberals, which is good enough. We became progressive, and uh, from progressive, we became a uh, walk. And uh, slowly, slowly, the, the rule that uh, if you are uh, uh, white uh, and man, uh, then you are uh, uh, an oppressor. And if you are brown and, uh, and uh, Muslim, uh, you are uh, oppressed. Nothing to do with reality, nothing to do with facts. 
because I'm getting back to what I said. The victims of jihad are mainly Muslims. Lately, by the way, in the last two, three years, it's mainly in Africa, mainly in the Sahel countries. They are mass murdering the people of Africa. They are the victims. They are, with all the respect, and I have a lot of respect to what happened in uh, uh, 9-11 and uh, October 7. But the main uh, uh, problem is, again, the, the, main pro- the, the victims are mainly Muslims, totally forgotten. So who you are demonstrating uh, in favor of? In favor of the jihad that is mass killing the poor people of the world, the uh, poorest uh, Muslims, what are you doing? But they ignore the facts, like if we do not care about facts. Now, one component is, of course, anti-Semitism. This is one explanation. I mean, you cannot ignore the fact that there is anti-Semitism, which is coming back. Now, before it was against Jews, now it is against the, the state of Jews. So, so uh, because there is not any rational, there is not any rational explanation to this school of thought that is blaming Israel in all the atrocities in the world. There is not. How come they do not demonstrate against what is happening in China, against the Uyghurs? How come they do not demonstrate about the mass killing in Darfur? Did you ever see a demonstration against uh, uh, the Muslims who kill other Muslims. Arab Muslims kill uh, uh, black Muslims in Darfur. No, they do not demonstrate. So it's not about humanity. It's not about uh, moral values. No. They demonstrate only one against one state uh, uh, on earth. Not because Israel is killing more Muslims. Not at all. Israel is defending itself. They demonstrate against Israel because in Israel we have Jews. That's all. And we have to admit it. How is it that they don't see what you've clearly presented, Ben Dror, is, is really the, the hypocrisy of all of these different movements. If you're talking about the Black Lives Matter movement, well, thousands and thousands of Black Lives are being uh, um, taken in the name of Islam, in the name of this uh, um, genocidal movement. And and nobody cares. Look, um, when you have when you have uh, Jews like uh, Noam Chomsky, like Norman Finkelstein, like Gideon Levy, uh, and many others, Judith Butler, and then they leg- legitimize this kind of new anti-Semitism. Oh, you see, Jews, Jews are spearheading the whole propaganda. They are leading. They are producing this kind of propaganda. Why? Now I have to be a psychologist, which I'm not going to be. But, but I mean, how come the Judith Butler is calling the Hamas and Hezbollah like uh, progressive uh, movements, part of the global left? How come the Chomsky is going to uh, uh, Nasrallah? And uh, when, when Nasrallah declared in his own voice I need a final solution for the Jews, a final solution for extermination, of course. How come? It doesn't make sense. I know it doesn't make sense. And and I must admit, with my limited power and knowledge, I cannot explain. I cannot explain why people like Chomsky and uh, Finkelstein or Gideon Levy or many others are part of this industry of lies against Israel. Why they are part of the demonization of the Jews in the world? I cannot understand it. I need, uh, uh, we need an expert about uh, this question, but I cannot answer. I turn off as soon as I hear somebody say, or somebody writes, as a Jew, I blah, blah, blah. Yeah. The yeah. worst thing that can happen. So uh, my my only weapon as a researcher, my only weapon is to present the facts. To present the facts. I mean, this is, I mean, I know, I know in advance that it will not help with the anti zionists It will not help with the uh, anti-Semites. But in many cases, 
For young students, when they do not know, you have to equip them with the right information and in a way to immune them from this propaganda. That's, that's by the way, what I'm doing in many uh, universities in the world. When I speak to Hillel chapters of, I mean, but to change the minds and hearts of people who are totally against Israel, Jews and non-Jews, it's a lost battle. What I'm trying to do is uh, uh, to, to at least to immune the uh, uh, um, fresh students, just to know, just to know that what the professors are telling them, it's a manipulation. Just to know that when they are speaking about the Palestinian Nakba, for example, Nakba happened to every uh, in every conflict, and there was a Jewish Nakba that was much worse than the Palestinian Nakba. They don't know about it, and I give them the information. Just an example of of the way that uh, that uh, information, uh, which is not Hasbara, which is not advocacy, just information, might be can be very useful. Just providing, a, 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 as you correctly said, I think that that if we can divide the world into into three different sections, you have the the diehard Zionists who it doesn't really matter what Israel does, it can do no wrong. We have the diehard anti-Semites. It doesn't matter what Israel is doing, um, it's responsible for all the evil in the world. And then we have that middle category of people who who, who simply need uh, access to information, need access to reliable research. Yeah. Um, and 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 there. That's the vacuum that needs to be filled by p people like yourself, uh, uh, um, and if I may, also by by by, by the JCPA, the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs. That's that's the education that we're trying to provide, the information that we're trying to provide. See the circumstances in their true light. Understand that there are. You don't have to necessarily believe one argument or the other. Open your eyes, open your ears to a different perspective, and understand that in some cases, yes. You are being told an outright lie when you're talking about the numbers of people murdered uh, uh, um, by Israel in, in its uh, intentional targeting of of Palestinians. Those are outright lies, and 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 so you have to be able to understand them and 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 articulate why those uh, arguments are fundamentally lacking in any type of uh, uh, veracity. You see all these uh, um, arguments being made, and 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 it's sad that. That there are so many things which are presented by ostensible experts um, who really uh, don't know what they're talking about. I just, uh, with your permission, uh, Ben Draw, we have a few questions. So, uh, for one of our our, our our regular guests who who wants to know where he can find your article, so the article is entitled Ben Draw's uh, uh, a recent article um, in English is entitled "Israel's War is the War of the Free World." You can find it also. Uh, it, it appears on Ynet. Um, Amongst uh, other places. Why not news? Why not news? Not why not. Why not, is, why not is Hebrew? Why not news is English? Yeah. And and you can find also the the article in 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 half a dozen different languages, right, Benjor? Uh, yeah, and... yeah, many languages. Yeah, yeah. My articles, generally speaking, uh, uh, are published in many languages. Uh, I mean, this article that you mentioned was published even in the uh, Die Welt, which is uh, one of the leading uh, newspapers in uh, Germany, and in many other publications. Yes. You can find the uh, yeah, and in uh, Spanish, I would add. In Spanish, yes. And if only in we Portuguese, could... in Portuguese, yes. In French, yes. If only we could. Also... Italian, in Italian, in it Italian, yes. If yeah. only we. Could I don't know. Also... I don't know all the languages, but but I, I saw at least seven languages. I think that we just need to publish it now, also in Australian and in American, um, so that it can be easily understood by those people who are. Um, who pretend to speak English but don't really speak English, um, and 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 are missing out on on all of those uh, um, uh, um, um, important parts that you're raising. I apologise. Um, I have nonetheless a, a, a English and South African background, um, so we speak a different English, um, and that's part of a, 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 the joke. Um, at least, I, at I least not... I can understand you. When I was uh, I had a speaking tour in Australia, I could not even understand the people. I needed a translator. <laughs> I will also add. Since we're running out of time, you can find the answers not just in Ben Dior's article, but on the website jcpa.org, and by by listening to these public to these podcasts, um, and you know the times, 
Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, these broadcasts, uh, we come to you every day at four o'clock in the afternoon, Israel time, um, which is uh, uh, nine o'clock on, on, on Eastern Standard Time. It's very early on the West Coast. We apologize. In Australia, it's, a, it's actually a normal time of the day. Um, and, and, and maybe we, we could just have, just have a, a, a final comment from you, Bendra, as, as we wrap up. Where do you think that the world is? Uh, 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 where are we going? Can we uh, um, can we persuade the West still that that Israel is this last stalwart before before is a uh, fundamentalist Islam also uh, really runs over uh, over Europe and over America? Um, yes, yes, we can, we can, we uh, should never give up. We should never say that. Uh, that uh, everything is lost. Not at all. Not at, yes. We have a problem with the youngsters. We have a problem with the media. We have a problem with the academia. But but even now, even now, you see that uh, uh, in public polls that there is a majority which is supporting Israel and not uh, the Hamas. And we have to continue. We have to continue. We have to do the work. Uh, we need in in some aspects. It's also a question of policy. I don't think the what uh, the Israeli government is doing concerning this conflict is always the right thing, but I will not elaborate about it because we don't have time. But generally speaking, no, we do not have to give up. We, uh, as there are many, many kind of Hamal, which is a kind of uh, war room of youngsters, of students, decent uh, 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 students who uh, are trying uh, to uh, disseminate uh, the real facts about the conflict, many, but many, uh, uh, private initiatives, I mean, trying to fight this kind of lies. No, the battle is not lost. The battle is not lost. We cannot give up. There are decent people. We saw, for example, the British uh, journalist and writer, uh, Douglas Murray, uh, who is really fighting the so many lies. And uh, speaking about uh, a guy from CNN that I don't even remember his name, that gave a speech, I think, uh, one day or two days ago, Great speech in the CNN against his friends, against his colleagues, how they manipulate actually everything. So, no, not everything is lost. Yes, we have the uh, New York Times, which is in 99% is against Israel, but we have the Wall Street Journal. Again, again, nothing is lost. We have to stick to the uh, uh, facts. And I hope, I hope eventually we will mean we have no option to be to be defeated. Good on you, Ben Dror. Thank you, Ben Dror. Maybe we'll just leave uh, um, with the words of of, of Sheikh uh, Salman bin uh, bin Hamad al Khalifa, um, who clearly said uh, um, de de described morality as the way that it's meant to be. That uh, um, the October seven massacre was barbaric, and it should be condemned by every civilized person. Um, Let's hope that those uh, uh, um, really uh, uh, truisms can come out not only um, from uh, uh, um, from the Arab countries um, and be seen more in those countries, but also on uh, the campuses of Berkeley and of Harvard and uh, uh, um, and all of the uh, those other universities that are inverting uh, uh, um, morality and and destroying really any type of uh, uh, objective truth. Thank thank you very much for for joining us all. We'll be back again with you tomorrow. Um, like I said, four o'clock Israel time. Um, join us. Keep safe in the meantime. Thank you, Ben Dror, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having time. me. Thank and, you. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Fast bike.